Welcome. Today I want to address a topic that nearly every man thinks about, but few ever speak openly about. How does daily ejaculation, specifically from masturbation, affect your prostate health? Is it harmless? Could it be helping you more than you realize? Or are there hidden risks we're not talking about enough? Far too often the prostate is treated as a kind of anatomical afterthought, something most men don't even consider until they start to notice changes in their urinary patterns, their energy levels, or their sexual health. For many, the wake-up call comes in the form of disturbed sleep due to nighttime urination, a sluggish urinary stream, or an unexpected comment from a physician during a routine checkup. But here's the truth. Your prostate health is not something to ignore or feel embarrassed about. In fact, being proactive about it could drastically impact your quality of life and longevity. I'm Dr. Samra Tarajlich, a board-certified urologist with nearly a decade of experience helping men, especially those over 40, retain their vitality, confidence, and health by taking control of their prostate wellness. Today, we're not just talking about daily ejaculation. We're going to explore the science behind it, the way your body responds biologically, hormonally, and neurologically. We'll also cover the three significant changes your prostate begins to undergo after age 40, the most common mistakes men make in relation to prostate health, and finish with a practical, research-backed action plan you can begin today. One that supports not only your prostate, but your overall well-being. Let's begin by clarifying a damaging myth, that masturbation or daily ejaculation is harmful to the prostate. The science says otherwise. In fact, one of the most comprehensive long-term studies on this subject, published in European Urology, a leading peer-reviewed journal, followed over 30,000 men across nearly two decades. Their conclusion was both powerful and clear. Men who ejaculated frequently, about 21 or more times a month, had a statistically significant lower risk of developing prostate cancer compared to men who ejaculated less often. Why is this the case? Researchers have coined a term known as the prostate flushing hypothesis. Imagine the prostate as a miniature plumbing system. Each time you ejaculate, that system is actively clearing out residual fluids, seminal fluid, old or malfunctioning cells, and possibly even microscopic inflammatory debris. This natural clearance helps reduce local inflammation, minimize cellular stress, and potentially prevents harmful buildup that, over time, might contribute to more serious pathological changes. On a cellular level, consistent ejaculation promotes turnover and removal of senescent or aging cells inside the gland, helping maintain a healthy internal environment. Just as we would never allow dust to build up indefinitely in our homes, we shouldn't allow stagnant fluid and cellular debris to accumulate inside one of the most sensitive parts of the male body. So, to answer that unspoken question, no. Daily ejaculation is not harmful to your prostate. In fact, it may serve as one of your simplest lines of defense. But here's the caveat. It doesn't work in isolation. Daily ejaculation on its own cannot compensate for poor nutrition, a sedentary lifestyle, excessive inflammation, poor sleep hygiene, or a lack of regular medical evaluations. It is one part of a holistic approach, not a silver bullet. Over the past nine years, working with men in their 50s, 60s, and beyond, I've seen consistent patterns. What I see too often are men who delay action until symptoms interfere with their quality of life men who underestimate the role lifestyle and environment play, and men who quietly struggle because of stigma or misinformation. That ends here. Let's examine what really begins to happen to your prostate as you age, starting around age 40 and accelerating by your 50s and 60s. First, prostate enlargement, known medically as benign prostatic hyperplasia, or BPH. While non-cancerous, this condition can greatly affect quality of life. As the prostate grows, it begins compressing the urethra, making it difficult to urinate fully and freely. You might notice a weaker urinary stream, hesitation before the flow starts, or that frustrating sense of incomplete bladder emptying. Many also find themselves walking to the bathroom several times overnight, disrupting sleep and draining energy levels the next day. 
Ejaculation, especially when regular, may aid in gently relieving some of the retained fluid pressures within the prostate, but it won't halt the growth completely. For that, a combination of diet, medical therapy, and lifestyle interventions is required. Second, hormonal changes, particularly shifts in testosterone and dihydrotestosterone, or DHT. As a man ages, his natural testosterone levels begin to decline. However, a portion of that testosterone is converted into DHT, a much more potent form. Elevated DHT levels are strongly associated with increased prostate growth and sensitivity. Regular ejaculation has been proposed to help maintain healthier hormone balances and receptor sensitivity, but it's part of a broader endocrine landscape one where exercise, sleep, and stress management also play essential roles. Third, cellular risk increases. Every day, your body is replacing old cells with new ones. But over the course of decades and billions of cell divisions, errors can accumulate. When you mix those errors with chronic inflammation and hormonal fluctuations, there's a higher risk of abnormal cells developing, including cancerous ones. This is exactly where the protective effects of regular ejaculation, not to mention anti-inflammatory nutrition, deliver a cumulative advantage. Let's now turn to common mistakes many men are making when it comes to masturbation and their overall prostate health. The first mistake is believing that ejaculation frequency alone is enough. It isn't. You can't ignore your nutrition, your activity level, or routine medical checkups and rely solely on frequent release to keep everything in check. The second mistake is using excessive force, particularly a tight or aggressive grip. This creates unnecessary trauma to tissues, especially as skin becomes thinner and more sensitive with age. Over time, this can lead to nerve desensitization and lowered sexual satisfaction. The third is rushing through the experience. As we age, our nervous system requires more time and less intensity to perceive and process pleasure. Fast automated routines can lead to frustration and diminished response. Take your time. Allow for arousal to build gradually. Fourth, skipping lubrication. Dry stimulation increases friction, which causes micro tears to delicate skin, irritation, and potentially low-grade inflammation. A simple water-based lubricant helps protect skin integrity, enhance sensation, and reduce risk of damage. And finally, the most concerning mistake, ignoring the early warning signs. Persistent pain, reduced sensitivity, burning, or noticeable declines in erectile strength these are not just part of getting older. They are potential clues that something more significant is occurring, whether hormonally, neurologically, or structurally, and they demand professional evaluation. Let's wrap up with the four-pillar approach I recommend to each of my patients who are serious about protecting their prostate long-term. First, yearly medical evaluations. This includes a blood test for PSA, prostate-specific antigen, a digital rectal exam, and an open discussion with your doctor. A few minutes of temporary discomfort could save your life. Second, an anti-inflammatory diet. Excess red meat, fried foods, and refined sugars are associated with chronic inflammation and worsened prostate health. Focus instead on a Mediterranean-style diet rich in colorful fruits, cruciferous vegetables, omega-3 fats from nuts and seeds, and olive oil. And yes, cooked tomatoes are a secret weapon. Why? They're rich in lycopene, a powerful antioxidant that accumulates in prostate tissue and has shown protective effects against conditions like BPH and prostate cancer. Third, consistent physical activity. Aim for 30 minutes of moderate intensity exercise most days, brisk walking, swimming, or resistance training. Movement improves circulation, positively influences hormone production, and reduces inflammation across the board. Don't overlook pelvic floor exercises either. Strengthening these muscles helps maintain control over urination and supports erectile function. Fourth, proper hydration. Drinking two to three liters of water daily helps dilute the urine, reduce irritation, and support both bladder and prostate health. So, in closing, if you've been wondering whether daily masturbation might be hurting you, let me reassure you. It's not hurting your prostate, if anything, it might be helping. But protecting your health requires a comprehensive approach, one built on knowledge, consistency, and action. 
Whether you're 40 or 70, your vitality is not in the rearview mirror. It is something you can reignite, protect, and even optimize, starting right now. Your body is not broken. You're not too far gone. You simply need the right tools to evolve with it, gracefully, intelligently, and confidently. If you found clarity in this discussion, consider sharing it with a friend, father, or partner who might need to hear it. And I'd love to know what is one small habit you're committed to changing this week to support your prostate? Drop it in the comments. Thank you for watching. I'm Dr. Samra Tarajlik. Your health deserves your full attention because when you understand your body, you empower yourself to protect everything that matters most.